warmly welcome all our listeners and viewers to yet another Bible study anchored by Diocese of Ife Church of Nigeria. It's our pleasure to welcome you to Bible study. Uh, the topic, the theme for the study is the grace of giving. Uh, the sub theme we are considering today is the dimension of giving in Christendom. And our topic for discussion is giving a mandate from God. To do this Bible study, I have very eminent people to my right and to my left. Uh, let me turn to uh, Mommy. Mommy, would you kindly introduce yourself? Thank you, sir. I am Mrs. Tumi Akebami. Thank God you, bless you, sir. And I'll add it to my right. Kindly introduce yourself, sir. Venerable Thomas Oshuni. And myself, by the grace of God, Venerable Folusha Owutade. So, once again, you are welcome. Our text for this study is taken from Luke chapter 6. We are reading from verses 30 through to 38. Luke 6, 30 to 38. Mama, will you kindly read for us? Now? Yes, sir. Luke 6, 30 to 38. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who loved them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full but love your enemies do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back then your reward will be great and you will be children of the most high because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked be merciful just as your father is merciful do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, it will be given to you. A good mayor, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the mayor you use, it will be mailed to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks to, God. to God. Thank you, Mommy, for helping us to read that passage. Once again, our topic is giving a mandate from God. And the aim of this study is to teach Christians and unbelievers that giving is a command from God and it is mandatory. From our passage, Jesus is emphasizing the inescapable command that God gave with regards to giving. And we'll notice that this is a recurring mandate throughout the Bible. Several passages bear witness to this. For example, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, and Hebrews 13, 6. Matthew 10, 8, what does it say, Mom? Heal hmm. the sick, yeah. raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely have you have received, freely give. Thank you, Ma. So, freely you have received, freely give. And Hebrews 13, 6 says something similar. And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. So, don't hesitate to share with others because this world actually pleases God. So, we can see that um, it is not surprising that God commands us to give because he himself is the greatest giver. Somebody says you can't outgive God. You just must try your best. <laughs> he first gave his only son. We all know this from kindergarten. John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that, that he, he gave. gave his only begotten in, son. Yes. And not just his son, he's also ready to give additionally to that son whenever he's called upon to do so. That is what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 32. In NIV, what does it say, ma'am? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him hope for us, 
how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? So we can see that in addition to giving his son, which is very precious to him, he says, how shall he not with his son freely give us all things that we need? So God wants us to follow his example of benevolence and he has commanded us to do the same. And we'll notice that the giving that God commanded is multidimensional. Giving involves giving to God and giving to our neighbor. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with your words, with the first fruits of all your crops. So, we are commanded to honor the Lord, to give unto God with the first fruits of our increase. And it also encourages us to give to our neighbor in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must walk, doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. So we can see that Paul encouraged the efficient believers, if you have been stealing, don't steal again. But everybody must work so that you have enough, not only for yourself, but to give to whoever asks from you. And this giving we are talking about is not even limited to money or material things. We are expected to give love. We're expected to give goodness. We're expected to give our blessings. We're expected to give prayer. Even when it's needed, you need to turn the other cheek. Because when you turn the other cheek, cheek you're also offering something. Yes. Your clothes, your earthly possessions. And this is all we read about in Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 30. Luke 6, 27 to 30. But to you, who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slap you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone take your coat, do not withhold your shirts from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Thank you, man. So we can see here that we have laid a foundation that God has commanded us to give because he himself is a giver and uh, the giving must be multidimensional. Everything that we have, we must give to God and give to anybody. So we have questions as we proceed. And the first question for discussion is, why did God command us to give? Why did God command us to give? To answer this question, I'll turn to Mami Akimbami to help us yes, answer it. Question number one. Yes. To give unto God, we can, we can discuss or we can know that it is a command. It's a command from God that we should give. According to First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14, which says, But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come from thee, and of them of thy own have we given thee. That shows that everything we have, God has commanded that we should give it because He has, is the one that possess all these things before it is being released to us. And according to Psalm 50, verse 9 to 12 which says, I have no need of a bull from your stall or of goats from your pains. For every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hill. I know every bears in the mountains and the insect in the field are mine. I, If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. This one is also emphasizing that God is the owner of everything, even the living and the non-living, both in the forest and the one inside water, in the one on the hearts, the one in our room is telling us that whatever we have, everything that we have is of God. He is the one that has given it to us. That is why he commanded us to give. And 
in Second Corinthians chapter nine verse seven, he say each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. You know, some people will want to give and they will be thinking, let me just give it because of what they have said or because of so, so, so reason. The Bible is telling us that we should give cheerfully, not uh, reluctantly and not under compulsion that we have to give and not because somebody is asking us or, or expecting us to do much. We should give willingly from our, from our hearts. And I think that is the most uh, gift or the most giving that is uh, having much blessings from God. In First John chapter 3, verse 16 to 16, he said, this is how we know that we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possession and sees a brother or sisters in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Their children, let us not love with words and speech, but with actions and truth. This passage is telling us that we should love in words and in deed, not just in, in, in even in action, not just by saying it. We should give whatever we have to our, to our brothers, to our neighbors, to people around us, as much as we know they are in need, even without them asking, we should try and give it to them. And God is blessing us as we are doing that. Thank you very much, Ma. So why did God command us to give? Everything belongs to God. You know, as mommy was saying this, I was just thinking about what we human beings do. A man mm. will buy a car and say he's the owner. He even has what is called the owner's corner <laughs> <laughs> in the car. Or somebody will build it and say, I'm the landlord, you know. But really, everything belongs everything to God. Everything belongs comes God. from him and belongs to him. And of course, uh, there are people who have needs. God wants, loves a cheerful giver. So we we'll proceed with our question. Question number two. What are the reasons why people find it difficult to give? Huh? That's a very, very interesting one. Uh, uh, that uh, 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 <laughs> starting from the background, from where we've just looked at uh, the command. Of course, those who don't have God, who don't put God at the center of their life, the basic thing is they find it very, very difficult mm. to give because they look at all that they do have from the point of view that this belongs to me, mm. to no other person. So it becomes it becomes very difficult for such a, an individual to release because he can only release to himself and not to any other person since he didn't put any other person at the center of his life. But of course, if you go by, because it's a study, look at 12, uh, 20, which reference uh, we are given is a very interesting story, but we just take a verse there to emphasize what we are uh, saying. He said, uh, but God said to him, you fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then you will get what you have prepared for yourself. And when you look at that man, before God can turn to him and say, you fool, thinking of yourself, putting yourself at the center, being selfish, the man has actually showed it. Because in verse 19, he was just saying, I will, I will, verse 18 and 19. Let me quickly, he said, then he said, this is what I do. I will tear down my bands and build bigger ones. And then I will store my surplus grain and I will say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid off for many warriors. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. You can see within the context of those two uh, verses, idea was several. He did not even go to God who gave rain, who gave him strength. No recourse to any other person who contributed to that success. It's I, I, I. Self-centeredness. And when somebody is so full of himself, then he find it very, very difficult mm -hmm. to release. Mm. To release. Because he will say, I work for it. I labor for it. I do this for Even when other people are working for him, he will still say, I work for it. Mm. So you don't tell me who to give and what to do. And of course, we have seen that uh, 
that can be. So that's why God says foolishness. Foolishness on the part of somebody who will think only of himself. Will not make people to want to uh, to give, to release such easily. And of course in Timothy, when we are a lot of said about uh, getting rich, no, it's not bad to say we want good things. But God emphasized when we, because of time, we may not read, but he said, but godliness with contentment so is great gain. Of course, when somebody is not contented, it will be very, very difficult to give because he wants everything for himself, nothing for another person, not even for God. Because once that spirit is there, is the spirit of accumulation. And that accumulation center around himself alone. And so those are so uh, some of the reasons. Mm. And of course, we can say that when somebody is not godly, mm. when somebody is not godly, there is no way. Um, uh, uh, many, many, many experiences of life have attested to that fact that ungodly people don't give. They don't give. They, they, they look at it. Uh, I work for it. So why must I? In fact, the spirit of giving is not in them because uh, it's an ungodly spirit. Or it's a spirit walking through them. And so they cannot release because giving beyond it, like we have said, as a spiritual donation that makes others to be attracted to what you have. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, sir. Very, very interesting points there. A third question for discussion. So what are we expected to give to God and our neighbors? What really should we give? Thank you very much, sir. The first thing we should give to God as gift is our life. Mm. We should give our, our life to him in appreciation of his life in us. We should give our life. And according to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, it said, we should honor God with our weight then with the first fruit of our crops. Uh, this passage is telling us that everything we have, everything that belongs to us is of God. We should honor God with it. And he now emphasizes on the first fruit. That shows we should see it as priority. Mm. Giving to God must be seen as priority. Whenever anything comes to our pocket, we should see the one that is going to be given to God as the first thing. Also in the first Chronicles chapter 29, verse 2 to 3, he was talking about giving material things, especially when the we are the, we are the work of God is going on. He said he provided a uh, gold for things that is meant for that is to be done with gold, silver for what that is to be done for silver. This passage is telling us that if work is going on in our church, or in our environment and we discover that the person doing the project is not able enough and we have what is due for assistance at home we should give it if we have cement if we have uh, sand if we water. have stone yeah. if we have water we should give it out in support of the work of uh, the person or the work that is going in the church later in that verse I think in verse 3, he said, In my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasure of gold and silver for the temple of my God. Over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple. Apart from giving what the excesses we have in our homes, we should be ready to give money, treasure, our gold and silver, for the work of God and for people around us, so they also that are crawling can stand out as well and walk on their feet. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Maso. We are expected to give to God silver, gold, material things. I tell people that you have clothes in your house you've not worn in three months. Those clothes don't belong to you. You have <laughs> shoes that have been on your shoe rack for one year. You've not used it. It doesn't belong to you. So we should give uh, all this to our neighbors. Uh, the fourth question, which is the last one, is what are the benefits of obeying the command to give? Are there any benefits at all to ah. obeying this command? <laughs> that's, that's tremendous. I mean, <laughs> if, if, if God gives command, and we know that his command is always loaded mm. with a lot and lot and lot of benefits. And of course, uh, without missing word, and uh, since it's a study, we know that it's 
the popular scripture there is Luke chapter 6, but, uh, 38, 38, which is very sankosan. It says, give, and it's to it's be, be given to, to you. you. A good mayor, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the mayor you use, it should be mayor to you. If you look at those qualifying adjectives, as they used to say, it's just too wonderful. It's just, I mean, it's, that is beyond what you think you have. Because some people we think giving is losing. Be beyond what you think you lose, you discover that you have it in abundance, overflowing. Your own is not overflowing. But the one that will be given back, the scripture says, will be what? Overflowing. Mm -hmm. It's a glue mayor. Running over. And that is it. And uh, for people who have done so, how can, they can testify of that uh, very. So you can see the benefits. It's not something we can just quantify. And also we can see that in, even in 2 Corinthians 9, uh, 8 and 12, you can see God talking about abundance. The abundance that uh, uh, associates itself with this uh, issue of uh, giving. That, and he say abundance in all things. All things. Not yeah. just in one language. If you read that scripture very well, he say in all things, in terms of health, in terms of security, in terms of protection, in terms of, name it. He say in abundance. And because that is God. Uh, it's unlimited in resources. We can give to us far, far above what we can think or imagine. That is the benefit. And of course, in that popular script, Malachi 3, when he talks about offering and tithing, giving, of the put together, he talks about open level. He said, test me if I will not no. open the windows of heaven. So you can see open heavens of extra, extraordinary blessing. That is the emphasis there. When the, the heavenly open, uh, door is open unto one, you can see the outpouring of wonderful things coming into our life. And of course, you can see that he prevents. Terrible thing. He said, I will shut up. He said, he will prevent disaster, afflictions to come. So it's not only going to hurt. It's also going to prevent. But adventure, the enemy want to, on the basis of what you have done, attack you. God is there on your side. To do what? To, to prevent. prevent. Please God. Hallelujah. So, the benefits are much. Second uh, Corinthians 9, I particularly love the King James version of it. It says, God will make all grace abound towards you, towards you yes. that you having all sufficiency in all, all things, things may abound unto Every good, good work, work, all good. So it's all in all, in all, in all, the benefits of obeying the command to give. So as we conclude, giving is a command. We have no choice but to obey the command of God. God was the first to give, and he has commanded us to do so. And we are obligated to give to him and to our neighbors. After all, everything we have comes from him. Mm -hmm. And he has actually promised to bless us when we give. And we must never, never withhold ourselves from fulfilling this commandment so that the blessings of God will overflow in mm -hmm. our lives. Uh, memory verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 8, 7. Mommy, can you read for us? in? Uh, but since you exhale in everything, yes. in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete honestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. giving. So Paul was encouraging the Corinthian Christians that, look, you have excelled in faith, you have excelled in every other department, but you must also see that in this grace of giving, you, you must never be excel. found wanting. And my prayer is that we also will never be found wanting in this grace of giving. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We welcome your comments, we welcome your questions on our WhatsApp and SMS uh, line 0814 719 4912. 
0814-719-4912. So we want to appreciate our daddy for his participation and our mommy for her participation. Pray that the Lord will continue to increase his grace upon your lives. Mm -hmm. And as we have encouraged people to give, we also will never be found wanting in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Amen. And daddy, please, can you just give us a short prayer as we close? Faithful Father, we want to thank you because when you never you expose your will to us and we follow through, we are always the not only better but the best of it. We pray, Lord, that we make it easy for all of us to fulfill this wonderful mandate of yours mm -hmm. to give mm -hmm. so that the benefits therein we are cruel unto us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Jesus. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.